I must admit that I am very pleased that industrialized countries agreed to set quantified limitation and reduction objectives to elaborate policies and measures, and everybody who's familiar with the discussion knows what kind of compromise this was. I wish to associate my While you are sitting here, 100 people, young people outside are protesting. It was a very big shift for the United States to uh, move to a commitment to reductions, and it's very consistent with what we've said all along. Uh, but we think in the spirit of uh, keeping uh, the momentum going on climate change that that's an important step to take. Global warming and sea level rise, they are not fiction. They are happening right now, and it is placing the survival of the Republic of the Marshall Islands in jeopardy. So please, let us not be so self-congratulatory since we have achieved so little by this action. Well, it's impossible because we cannot say we're going to do something which we cannot do. And there was no question of compromising or no new commitments, not because we're unconcerned about the world, but because we, we, we really realize that there's no, we cannot reduce. It certainly is a historic opportunity that has been lost We've had 18 ministers here this week. They all agree that climate change is a very serious problem. They've talked about reductions, targets, and timetables. They've talked about legally binding agreements all week. But it seems like the bureaucrats have watered this down completely in overnight negotiation. And what was needed was the Toronto target, the 20% cut in CO2 emissions. That was what was essential to be agreed here. What we have now is a soft mandate that will open up the possibility of negotiating that. Yeah.